Last season, late in probably September, I decided I needed a new set of tires for my DR650. My old Kendas were getting pretty bad, so I decided on a set of Shinko 705s, mostly because my friend Carl had a rear tire that was probably 95% brand new. So I bought a front tire and brought it to my local dealer and they mounted and balanced these. When I got the tires home, I realized the front wheel had no wheel weights on it at all, and I thought that was kind of odd. We went for about a 2,000 kilometer ride on these, and right away the front tire felt a little squirmish, and I wondered if maybe they forgot to balance it. I gave a review of these tires and commented on the fact that I was going to balance them and then give them another shot this year. So I built my own homemade wheel balancer. Thanks again, Dan from Moto Dance to giving me the idea here. And today I'm gonna to walk you through the process of balancing one of these tires. Now, again, I've never done this before, so you're gonna learn as I learn on how this works. Okay, why don't we get started? I've already got the wheel off, but I'm gonna show you how to do it right here. I'm first going to remove this small screw in here, a machine bolt, using my number two JIS screwdriver. So you just pop it in there, push in a little bit to make sure you don't cam out the, the actual machine screw, and then this screw comes out. It's fairly long threads. What this little screw actually does is it holds in your speedometer drive cable here. We need to remove this out of the actual drive mechanism here so you can actually remove the front wheel. So once you get the screw out, you should be able to just wiggle this. Sometimes it's a little stiff and it'll come out. You can see what your drive cable looks like. So it's just a piece of flexible cable with a square end on it. And you can see this one's well lubricated. All of the O-rings are in good shape, and I'm just gonna set this aside so it doesn't get any dirt in it. To make sure this drive cable doesn't get any dirt into it, a little trick that I found is to use just one of these little sandwich bags. I slide it in, and then I zip it up all the way to where it um, sort of connects with, with the actual cable itself. Now I can tuck it out of the way here, and it'll stay nice and clean. I'm just gonna reinstall this little machine bolt here so I don't lose it. And this is always a good tip. If it's a small project like this, sometimes just reinserting the bolt, or in this case, machine screw, stops you from losing it. Next on the list is to loosen these four nuts. These are 10 millimeter nuts that pinch against the axle to prevent it from coming loose. I'm just gonna loosen these off and leave the nuts on there. You should not have to take off this pinching plate here, but if you do, make note that it is indexed. It actually has an arrow on there that you're gonna wanna make sure goes back in the same way that it is currently. So I'll just loosen these off now and uh, we'll move to the next step. Now that we have the pinch bolts loosened off, we can unthread the axle on the front wheel. And this is done with a 19 millimeter socket. The actual axle is threaded on the left hand side of the bike into the actual fork stanch stanchion tube. So I'm just gonna use a ratchet. Some people will use an impact wrench, um, but sometimes I find it's better just to take your time and use a hand tool than an impact wrench for stuff like this. You're dealing with a lot of aluminum with with uh, pieces like this. The stanchion tubes are aluminum, and you wanna make sure that you don't gall those internal threads. So I'll just keep turning this out until it comes out. When you reach the end of the threads, it's not gonna come out any further. It's just going to spin. So now we know we should be able to take the wheel off. 
what's going to happen when I pull this axle out is more than likely the actual speedometer drive is going to fall out. So you want to take a look at how it's oriented now before it falls out and then you're kind of scratching your head when it comes to reassembly. You can sort of see here that the speedometer drive faces almost directly back and that's the way it needs to go back on the bike before you actually um, put the axle through. Now on the other side, there is a spacer that's going to fall out as well. And that's okay. You're going to be able to put that back in. And then the axle should either fall straight down or you might need to move it forward a little bit to clear the front brake caliper. I'm going to support it from up above, pull out the axle and then let it drop to the ground gently where we can roll it out from the bike. There goes the spacer, here's our axle, and we can roll the wheel out of the way now. I removed the speedometer drive and I'm just going to put it into a Ziploc bag to keep it clean. And I'm going to drop this spacer in there as well so we don't lose anything. I've said this before, Ziploc bags are a project's best friend. On a small one like this, you really don't need to label everything. But on a big project, it's nice. You can write on them and it keeps everything straight. Okay, let's take a look over here at the wheel. Oh, here's the front wheel. And you can see now I've put the axle back in and there's actually enough uh, sort of surface area on either side here for the bearings for our wheel balancer to actually mount. There's not a lot, but there is enough and I think it's going to work out really, really well. I'm going to clean this axle up with a little bit of brake cleaner to make sure it's spotless and I'll re-lubricate it before we put the bike back together. So why don't we do that now? Here is the wheel balancer that I made in the last episode and I just have it up here on the top of my toolbox. I've set the wheel and the axle into it. And now what I need to do is ensure that the assembly itself is level. I can't guarantee that this workbench is, and that's why I, I included these leveling feet. So basically what I'll do is I'll use this nut driver and I'll adjust the four screws until it's perfectly level. And I'll just use a two foot level to do this. I'll go one way and then I'll go the other. Once it's level, I know that the wheel should ride perfectly well inside this apparatus. You're probably asking yourself, how exactly does this balancer work? Well, it works on the principle that the heaviest part of the tire and rim assembly will ultimately settle to the very bottom of the balancer down at six o'clock. And you can see right now with just a little bit of movement the tire is doing just that. When it comes to a stop, I'm pretty confident the heaviest part is down below. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little piece of green tape and put it at 12 o'clock to start with. Now I'm going to give it another little spin and see if it settles in exactly the same spot as it did originally. It's getting to the top of the cycle now, and it should settle somewhere around in the same spot if indeed the heavy spot was at the bottom. And it looks like that's exactly what's going to happen here. Yeah, it looks like it's done exactly the same thing, and it's pretty much come to 12 o'clock once again. What you're going to notice is the axle will pivot in these bearings, or in my case, the bearings in the hub itself are fluid enough that they're actually turning, not the bearings on the balancer. I don't think it makes a whole lot of difference which set turns, but, they, but one of those two sets has to be in good enough condition to be accurate. Knowing that that is probably the lightest spot, or at least directly opposite the heaviest, I'm going to use these wheel weights 
that have a little grub screw and I'm going to attach the lightest one to the top of the tire there. I'm going to see if that changes the balance at all. These just fit on and then get locked down against the spoke nipple. Now we're going to see what happens. This might completely change the way this tire is balanced. In fact, now it looks like it's going to settle down almost near the bottom. So this is too heavy of a weight. The problem is I don't have anything lighter than what came with the kit, these small lightweight ones. What I might have to do is put two weights opposite each other and see if I can balance it that way. What I'll do is I'll move those weights around on different spokes to try and get it to balance. You can see it's much better than just with one weight, but it still looks like it's a little bit heavy on that side. I'm going to move this one up one spoke nipple. It's moving very, very little now. I'm going to continue to tweak this a little bit. You can see it's coming a little bit heavier down on this side. I'm going to move this one up one more. We'll see how this works. It's very fussy doing this. And I'm not sure if I'm doing this the right way. I've never done this before. Boy, that is really close. It is really, really close to being balanced here. I don't know how much closer I'm going to be able to get this. I'm going to try moving this one one more and see what happens here. I think we have it here. I ended up with the wheel weights almost directly across from each other. If you remember, the heaviest part was straight down opposite that green piece of flagging tape. You can see where I have these wheel weights. They still move ever so slightly, but it's gonna, if I stop it, they don't have enough inertia or very little to get this moving again. I think this is probably pretty well balanced now. I'll take this opportunity to add a little additional grease to the speedometer drive here and also 
to the spacer here where the seal rides on it. I'll also take this opportunity to add some grease to the axle shaft itself before I stick it through into the hub. I have found, for myself anyway, the easiest way to get the wheel and tire back on the bike is to remove and hang the front rotor or the front caliper, I should say, off the side of the bike. What this does is it allows you to focus on getting the spacer and the speedometer drive assembly into the fork stanchions and get the axle through without having to deal with lining up the disc rotor in between the pads. Once you tighten down the front wheel, you can just put the uh, caliper back over the rotor and fasten those two bolts down to torque spec. This 19 millimeter axle bolt gets torqued to 65 Newton meters. I'll bring that up there so I can see it. Don't forget to take off your little piece of machinist wire here. Let's see if I can get this off. You want that off. And you want to torque up these bolts to 23 newton meters. There's one. Here we go. And your brakes are back on. I'll tighten these in a cross pattern. I know somebody had mentioned you're supposed to torque the bottom ones first. I could not find that anywhere in the manual. So these are only torqued to 10 Newton meters is it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's really, they're only there just to stop that axle from turning. That's it. There we go. Those are okay. The last thing we'll just put in the speedometer drive. And I guess that sums up today's episode on how to balance a tire for your motorcycle. I hope you found it useful. Again, I am not an expert at this. This is brand new to me and I think I've done it okay. But if you've actually done this and I'm doing anything wrong, please help me out and leave a comment down below so that other people can learn from your experience. I am confident there's a lot of tips and tricks on how to actually get these wheels absolutely perfect so please 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 leave a comment down below if you have more experience than me if you do like this type of content again i would ask that you like and subscribe to the channel it really helps me more than you can possibly imagine to understand what content people like and what people maybe aren't as interested in and it really does help YouTube's algorithm to determine if other people out there might enjoy watching this channel. And I'll see you soon here on Dino's Tinker Shed. So, tinker easy. <laughs>